I would describe my art to others as a visual language to explain music, magic, and emotions inside of my mind. I first knew that I wanted to be an artist when I was maybe about three or four, and I started drawing and I really liked creating characters and worlds and, you know, drawing my favorite characters, um, making new f friends or on paper or in coloring books or on my homework. And I started making little stories and kind of fan comics, like maybe in second grade. I just remember making an entire like comic book in a class about Frog and Toad, the book Frog and Toad with a little uh, frog and toad <laughs> that hang out together. And that was kind of where I realized that I really liked putting together stories, coming up with things on my own. I make art for two reasons. One, because it physically hurts me not to make art. Um, and it's really hard to get my feelings out or like without, without creating something. Um, and also to be able to inspire other people to make art, young or old. Um, I just want people to feel the urge to create when they look at my art or feel the urge to, you know, make something with someone else, you know, make, paint what they see, sculpt, do anything. Um, I feel like it's really important that people create. My favorite piece of work at the DIA would probably be hmm that's so tough there's so many good pieces there I think it would be Martha and Mary Magdalene by uh, Caravaggio I used to skip class to <laughs> to go to the DIA and just sit there and look at that painting it's so dramatic it's uh, there's so many little secret details that you can see if you really look close at it I really love that about Caravaggio I love that he used drama and suspense in all of his paintings and also had an eye for like beautiful shadows and beautiful tiny details that you know you really have to take a really long look at the painting to really get every you know, f stroking the fingers or how fabric sits on top of the subjects. And I really like that he puts you right there at the moment in the scene and makes it feel like you're right there. I'm currently unable to go to any print studios, which was my plan for this year, is to spend as much time uh, doing more printmaking than digital art, which is what I've been doing a lot lately. So I'm going to show um, the closest thing that I can do, which would be uh, to do painting. So I'm going to do a little um, demo about how I'm setting up my painting before I go straight into it. this piece I'm painting my friend China for a series that I started to kind of get back into doing more traditional work especially with painting and printmaking. Uh, I'm doing this piece on Procreate as kind of a map and like a setup for the actual painting so what I'm doing is I'm kind of going at it in the same way that I would would for a screen print so I'm kind of keeping at all the different colors the different patterns and all the different line work on separate layers 
that way when I go to kind of set up my canvas for the actual painting everything will kind of be separated it'll be easy to know where everything goes and it'll make it a little bit neater so that when I go in to do all of my fine details all of my flats and my patterns and everything will already be there and I can just kind of like fine tune everything. So all of my little layers, all the pattern on the caftan, um, all the line work within there, all of, the, all of the details in her face, the plant and everything are on separate layers which you can do in Procreate and kind of give it more of a like painterly or printerly look and when I'm ready to take everything off I'm just kind of going to have my iPad there at, and have the, the illustration open to just kind of give me a guideline of how everything will be set up on the actual painting. If I could help kind of inspire someone to just go out and make something and do something that then I've done my job.